So, we made a nap yesterday. That someone went in and messed it up real bad. Dang. So I guess you as a group were debugging it. Let's check out Slack. Do, 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 do. There are a bunch of issues here in this app. I'll try running it. Sure hope some stuff works. Load, 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 load. Crash. Ah, oh, man. Something happened. Who ran into this crash? Decoding JSON. Sam, what'd you do to fix it? User should be user wrapper. How'd you figure that out? Why was this crashing? What was wrong with that decode? Yeah, so the format of the JSON, user info, is one big object here. And then inside of that is a key results, which is an array of users, which is what we want to use. So let's go here. We use a user wrapper, which is just that object we created, that type that we created, to let us get at the results. What did you return here? Neat. Great, let's run it now. Sure hope it works. Damn, something crashed. Oh no. Looks like something happened with my table view. Found nil while implicitly unwrapping uh, something. What's not connected? My table view is not connected. Damn. All right. Let's take a look. Do do do. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. I guess I have. Um, the Pocahontas song stuck in my head today. I'm sorry if that tortures you. How do I connect it, Mario? This guy isn't connected to something. Neat. I can just do, come on, there we go. Just do that, now it's connected. Let's run it and see if it works now. Oh, nice. <laughs> it loaded up my table view. That's great. Woo. All right. This search bar, I think it should search for things when I use it, right? That's what I expect when I see an app that does that. But it's not doing it. I know. Oh, no, it's true. How did you all fix that? How did you debug that? Oh, you saw that it, let's see. This search bar, that's not even used anywhere, damn. All right, so I gotta set search bar delegate. Why is nothing popping up? Let's see. Neat. I guess it's working. Ah, that's because this table view controller conforms to UI search bar delegate. Let's run it. Henry. Ah, it's still not searching. Why not? It's got this text did change thing that's supposed to respond every time the text changes. What, Levi? 
got to use my results somewhere. Okay, it looks like I'm using this users in my data source function, but that doesn't respond to my searches. Why is this not? Aha, this filtered users. Is this a stored or a computed property in? Cool. So this figures out some stuff based on that original users. But when I'm actually filtering, I guess I want to update my table using that. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Nope, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'll do that here. I want to say for each cell, find the user you're looking at. Get, informa get information from it, and for the number of cells, figure out how many filtered users there are. Wowzer. Let's run it. Eugene. Ah, there he is. YR. Bird. Bennett. Neat. This looks like it's working how I thought. Did anyone else find anything in this view controller that was a problem? All right, cool. Let's try the other one. Ready, set, stops. Ah, it crashed. Damn. Let's have a look at where it crashed. Uh, B, what's going on? Oh. All right. I mean, I kind of like the idea of that kind of file. JSON file. Search only for JSON. All right. JSON is an encoder for the popular JSON G format written in Ruby. I don't know. We've never used that. That makes sense. Let's use JSON. Thank you. Stops. Ready, set, stops. Ah, I crashed again. Dang. What happened? Anyone figure this out? Let's put in some breakpoints. Because it looks like the error is in this do catch block. I'm going to run it again. Boom. All right. So. Right now we know we found a file name, we found a URL, we learned yesterday that the proper way to find the URL in our project is by using this initializer function, URL, file URL with path. Now we're in this do block. Let's try to get data for the contents of that URL. I'm going to hit this continue button and hopefully if it doesn't crash it goes to this next breakpoint. If it does crash, it's going to trigger that fatal error. Okay, so the data worked. Now we want to use a JSON decoder to decode that array of stocks. Let's see if that works. Uh, so it never got to line 32, which means it crashed at line 31. Why do we think this crashed, Diana? Okay. Sunny, why do you think this crashed? Oh, how'd you figure that out? Oh, you looked at the file. Interesting. I'm gonna, I'm gonna print out the error here. Cause it's gonna give us an error in our catch block. All right, load my stocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know now. We know what's going on. Thank you for your help, breakpoints. We won't be needing you. Interesting. It says there's no value associated with the key encoding keys opening, which is a string. All right. Interesting. So this is the error that printed out. That error is called key not found. Pretty helpful name. It's saying it couldn't find a key in our JSON. And why is that? Let's go take a look-see. 
in Apple stocks. We probably want something to do with a date, with an open, and a close, right? We talked about that yesterday. Let's go look at our user model. Ah, all right. We should be in our stock model. So these things are not called the same thing as what we saw in JSON. How can we fix that? Jason. Cool. Can you walk me through how to make that enum? Cool. Now what do I put inside here? So here are the three ones I want. Sorry, I can't really hear you. Also add the date. That sounds good. Let's run it and see what happens. Load my stops. Ah, nothing loaded. We got no crashes. Where do you think we should look to figure out what's going on in this stuff right here? Let's go look in our table view. I feel like that's a pretty good assumption. All right. Got a thing called stocks. That's great. That's some stocks by month and year. Oh, what? Okay. This stuff? What do I have to do to it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, that's right. I gotta set my data source. That's equal to sell. Oh, we've done that before. All right, let's run it again. Stocks. Ooh. Ooh, there's some stuff. Oh, wow. Neato. Interesting. Some of these are not sorted. I think I gotta fix my model. But uh, for now, that's all I care about. How did you all find this? Do you like debugging? Okay, for those of you who shook your heads, get used to it. <laughs> Great. I thought this is a pretty good exercise. I wanna do this more often. Sunny. In the stock model. This stuff, because when you're decoding, when you're decoding a JSON or when you're decoding into something that's codable, it's only looking to create initial values for stored properties that don't already have value. Yeah, because if you were decoding into something called day, this is a computed property. It doesn't actually save any information to that variable. It just goes looking elsewhere to get that information. Let me repeat that. So when you are decoding a JSON, you are looking for the stored properties. You are only looking to provide values for stored properties because you don't save any information to computed properties. Computed properties always get their values from some other place. They don't store any information. Neat. All right, let's talk about the internet. You guys heard of it? Yeah, all right. It's the place you get cat gifts. It's the place you do all this stuff. The way that 
we perform operations on the internet right now through a paradigm called RESTful APIs. Most of the APIs that we run into, which are things that you go ask for, for information, are using this paradigm called REST. What is REST, you say? Let's see if we can find out some more. <clears throat> um, <laughs> sorry. REST APIs, representational state transfer. It is a software architecture, interesting, that defines a set of constraints for creating web services. Web services that conform to REST architecture style, called RESTful web services, provide interoperability between computer systems on the internet. Did you know that you've already been using the RESTful architecture? With your GET request. So think of REST as, when they say architecture, that's a pretty good term. Another term might be a paradigm. Another term might be a convention. RESTful APIs are set up so that you can perform certain operations on them. A GET, what does a GET request do? We've done that plenty of times. Add. Yeah. GET's info. There are three other main ones, sometimes a fourth, that perform different operations. You only want to be Receiving information from the internet, it would be helpful if you other stuff. Other stuff. All right. What's an example of an other stuff you might like to do on the internet? Sam. Post a tweet. Cool. If you had to guess, which of these things do you think you would use to post a tweet? Yeah. So post, roughly, is for creating a new thing. So creating a new tweet is you sending to the API some information that you want for it to create a new instance of a tweeter. So then it'll do some stuff, it'll add it to your timeline, it might add a GIF, it might save that information. But you, from your app, are saying, here's some information, create a new piece of information that you store on Twitter. So that's what a post grab is. This is what we were talking about today. I just want to go through the other ones pretty quickly. Put is pretty vague. It's weird. But have you ever heard the term patch? What does to patch something mean, Carrie? To cover up. To cover up. Okay. I like that. Kevin, what's another way you might define that? To update something. To update something? Cool. Where do you like where do you get that term from? Yeah. So video games, sometimes something's broken and they update it. A put or a patch is to update. These things are not synonymous. A put is different from a patch. We're not going to use them today, so we're not going to talk about the difference. But the job for both of them generally is to update. You could also use a put to create stuff. You could also use a patch actually to delete stuff. But let's not worry about that. You use it put to create and update. Oh, that's a different question. No, post is generally just to create something. It might behind the scenes update other stuff, but you're saying make a new instance of this specific thing. So if you posted a new tweet, you create a new tweet, and you want to go back and edit information from the tweet, like in that same tweet on that same All right, nine thousand dollar question. What do you think delete does? <laughs> yeah, I don't have it. All right. So this is the stuff. These are the main ways that you'll interact with an API that conforms to the RESTful architecture. Sounds great, right? You can get some stuff, you can create some stuff, you can change that stuff, and you can delete that stuff. But 
That's how pretty much most of the internet works. It says there that this thing is called representational state transfer. Does anyone have any guess for what that actually like means in plain language? Representational state transfer. What do you think transfer means? To send data, yeah. Send something. Get something from point A to point B. You transfer funds in a bank. It's going from an account to an account. You transfer to a different class. You're going from one class to another, or a school, something like that. What do you think state means? it is at that moment in time. Wonderful. State is how something exists at a particular point in time. Some state we have dealt with is data. The thing about our data is it has to be represented in a specific way. You can't just say, here's a file, something.txt. It's not helpful. So what is a representation that we have been using to get data? What is a representation of the state that we've been using to get data? Would it be JSON? It would be JSON. So we have been using the JSON representation of state to get information off the internet. Let's look at Postman and make a get request. <coughs> Where you at? You're on my screen. All right. Go away. Go away. Go away. Let's look for, we've used this before, let's look for all the breweries in the state of New York, or at least 20 breweries I think there are. What's the representation of the state that we received in this GET request? Yes, I agree, it's JSON. That's denoted here. Let's see if we can represent it in a different way. So XML, certain markup language. HTML, it's a different way of getting that data. Text, it's another way. What do you notice about these representations, though? They're not as pretty, but they're all the same information. JSON is just something that's a little more human readable. And so we've said, give me that information in JSON. Something we've also been doing, without even knowing it, is we've been saying the type of information I want to return is something called application slash JSON with this car set UTF-8. Any ideas what those are? Sunny? UTF-8 is how you, like the way you write something. Or it conforms to a way of um, writing something. Okay. Agreed. Angela, can you look up what UTF actually stands for, please? And post it in Slack. I don't know. What do you think that application slash JSON? This content type key is something that you're performing, is something you're sending over in your request. And also getting a response in your request. But don't worry about that right now. And you're saying, what format would I actually like to receive that information in? This wasn't important for get requests, 
But it's going to be important when you are creating information using a poster class. And that's because you are going to tell whatever API is out there. So something, some computer somewhere that holds information, you're saying, I want to create something. And you have to give the content type because you want it to know that you're sending it over as JSON. When you create something, you're not just hitting a URL, but you're actually saying, you're going to have to, like, I don't know, maybe take an object and encode it. into JSON or some other content type. And if you encode it, you're going to turn your Swift object into something that you can send via the internet to that server. And so when you talk about this content type, you want to be able to tell that server, expect my info. in this format. Angela, can you tell us about UTF? Character encoding in Unicode? Something like that. So not only are you, with your content type, saying the format of your information, you're also saying the type, the specific way it should read each character in your information. That's what that UTF-8 is. We've seen Unicode a couple times. Characters in Swift don't just exist as characters. They're saved and they conform to this protocol, maybe, called Unicode. So does the rest of the internet. We don't know exactly how it uses Unicode, but we're saying you can read it using Unicode. So our content type says both the format of the chunk of information and how it can read each <coughs> literal character in there. We're going to use that today. We're going to try not to go in until 1 o'clock so you don't fall asleep. I would feel about that. <coughs> yeah, OK. Let's take a seven minute break.
clear and off button. Yeah, pump it in. Pump it in. <laughs> I think as the season changes, the air will be less. Need like three minutes, sorry. <laughs> Three more minutes.
Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. So, Rod. I'm sorry? It's really cold. Talk to Liana. She's the one who's been. Uh... All right. No. Okay. No, it's too high. It pumps heat. Put it at like 73. I'll trade jackets with you if that helps. Okay. All right, let's get started. So, today we're going to make post requests. How do y'all feel about that? Cool, I do too. Post requests. That thing. We're going to send information, so it's going to be a little different. First thing we want to do is... I'm sorry? <laughs> Nothing yet. I want you all, I just posted in Slack, sign up for this API. You will be able to get an API key. I'm doing it on my computer. Ooh, 14-day pro trial plan. What will I be using it for? You can skip all of the stuff it asks you about yourself. Skip. Skip, skip. I don't think you have to like do one of those. Click this link to verify you're a real human being. It seems like they really don't care. Um, so let's take three minutes. You should be at this page. My first workspace. It's so nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it did kick you out? So when I was uh, I to the I was back to the login page and kind of up again and it just What's your solution? Try again? Basically. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, raise your hand if you are not signed up yet. Thirty-five more seconds. You won't need this right this second, I promise. Okay, so if you have signed up and skipped all that stuff they ask you about yourself, you should come to this thing, my first workspace, Wowzer. This is your first workspace. Uh, I don't want to verify. It's, gonna, it's giving you a bunch of templates here for how you can use their service. 
What does their service do? Let's look at this project tracker. Aha. Uh -huh. So it's got this little toast saying, here's some information. This thing kind of, that's what this is called, this Hinty thing. Um, whoa. Customize your fields to hold text, attachments, checkboxes, and more. Whatever. Stop showing me things, please. I just want to look through it. All right. So has anyone ever seen anything that kind of looks like this? Looks kind of like a spreadsheet. Cool. Spreadsheet is just a visual representation of some data. In your apps, you are also making a visual representation of some data. Spreadsheets build in a lot of stuff, too. Like, if you look at the code for Excel, it's like a huge program. It's crazy, like, <coughs> how much stuff it does. But, basically, this is just a list of stuff. If I scroll down, so each row is an item, or maybe an object. And each column is a property that each of those objects has. Kind of like your models, right? So this is kind of like some kind of mix between a spreadsheet and an actual database because, ooh, look at all this stuff. Here's another setup. These things are called tables. The table is just how you model different models. So this is a list of what they call clients, which is one table. It's a list of tasks, which seems to be some other type of table that works in a really cool way. And this is a list of design projects. Tables can have different categories, blah, 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 blah. We'll talk about this much more next unit. What we're going to try to do today, fingers crossed, is from our apps, load this stuff up, and then create a post request that does this same thing. So you might be used to hitting plus and adding stuff in an app. That's what we want to do. We want to save it. If we do it right, it'll update in our app. When we perform a get request, we will get back all this information, including the new thing. And we'll see it in this table. That's how clients and servers work. This is a visual representation of the information that the server has. We've been doing GET requests, and we've been seeing that in Postman. This looks a little nicer. Sunny. Is there a table, like a project management program, that has the ability to upload the downloads, or is it specifically for the system? The former. It looks like a project management thing that Ben and I discovered yesterday as we were trying to find something that you could all use to make post requests. I don't really know who uses it. Um, but yeah. So here's the first thing we're going to do. I put in Slack a JSON file. Let's grab that JSON file. Download it. I'm going to I'm going to start a new project in Xcode. Go away. In Xcode. Bless you. It's going to be project tracker post request. I am making a new one, yeah. You should definitely. I will also be updating this so that you can all get the code if you get lost in my dust. Eat my dust. OK. <laughs> Sorry. I want to try to not have this drag through the remaining two hours of the morning. Not because I don't like you, but because I'd like for you to practice it. I'm going to get rid of that thing. Sorry, I'm just cleaning some stuff up. A little inner retentive. 
Um, okay. So here I've got that JSON that I just created. And here I've got our new repo for our new project. I am going to go in here. I'm going to say git init. I'm going to add everything. I'm going to commit an initial commit. Then I go quickly to GitHub. I'm going to make a new one. Make project tracker post request. All right. No. Oh. Yes. All right. I'm going to open that up. Here is the URL of that repo. There it is. It's just empty right now. I'm going to open this thing up. Let's have a look. I didn't add tests, but I do want to test. Does anyone know how I can add tests to this project? I want to add a new target, that's right. And way down here, there's a plus button. Let's see if I can do test. Look for that. Nice. I want to add unit testing. So I'm adding a new target by going all the way to this topmost looking folder, hitting plus in the targets, then doing that and make some tests. All right. Now it automatically gives me a thing called test. That's great. I can run it using command U. I hope it works. There's two test examples. 